Warning! Spoilers for Enola Holmes 3 Book Adaptation There's no doubt that one of the major players right now in female empowerment is Enola Holmes. Known to be the sister of the iconic and well-loved Sherlock Holmes, she's definitely someone to adore and be inspired by. I want to dive deep into the third installation of the classic book series by Nancy Springer. This is Enola Holmes 3 First Look. Hot or not? One thing I am good at is fighting. Now, tell me, where is she hiding and what… I think Enola Holmes is one of the greatest inspirations for a teen girls. She's definitely a beacon of inspiration. The plot line of the movie adaptation, which stars Stranger Things' Millie Bobby Brown as Enola, Henry Cavill as Sherlock, and Sam Claflin, who plays their other brother, Mycroft Holmes, starts with Enola, a 16-year-old teenager who travels to London in order to look for her missing mother which had disappeared on her birthday. Refusing to go to school to be a proper lady in her famous brothers are the one and only Sherlock Holmes himself. The plot I had mentioned earlier was also the plot for the first book, The Case of the Missing Marquis. Well, now with the sequel out, I want to cover the plot of the third book, which expounds more on Enola's adventures. Sherlock? Enola. Okay. So for the plot of the third adaptation of the book basically covers the case of the missing Dr. Watson, who's the right hand of Sherlock Holmes, he himself doesn't have a single clue as to where he could be, which definitely intrigues Enola. Also, she's still hiding from her brothers and definitely, if she got involved, it would be a disaster. But she definitely can't help but investigate. Later on, Enola learns that a bizarre bouquet with flowers that symbolize death she knows that she must act quickly. The goal is to find Dr. Watson in time before everything goes into a disaster. In the previous two stories, Enola uses disguises, codes, false names, and her familiarity with London to solve the case. Fans of the first two books will be intrigued by ciphers, coded newspaper messages, the meaning of flowers, sophisticated vocabulary, and repeated references to Enola's mother, who vanished in the first book. However, this makes it less autonomous as a standalone. Better. You need to wash so your clothes similar. every now and again. So you are pale, to look past undernourished, your and you've lost your. Stop. To go further more into detail, this story begins with Dr. Watson in a lunatic asylum, who was sent there by Mr. Kippersalt, where all of his protests and resistance were deemed as side effects of his delusions. Him disappearing is reported in newspapers, where Enola has managed to find out about it. While she knows that she needs to find Dr. Watson, she's very well aware that Sherlock will be out to look for him as he's a close friend and the right-hand man of Sherlock. So Enola, being the bright and cunning detective that she visits Dr. Watson's wife, and she notices that among many bouquets of flowers, there's one very bizarre bouquet. While figuring out the mystery of Dr. Watson's disappearance, she also manages to solve a murder case. To lessen the spoilers, you guys are gonna get a stop from plot explaining here. However, this story leaves a lot more clues and mysteries than the previous two other books, but still manages to produce an unexpected twist at the end of the book. What happened? Uh, who did this to you? Was it him? Sarah's man? May? The theme of Enola's sympathy for the poor in London still is in play in this story and also coded conversations in the newspaper between Enola and her mother, who's also hiding. Enola misses her mother a lot, this form of communication reassures her of her mother's interest. There is a particularly touching and heartwarming scene where Enola comes to a point where she forgives her mother for deserting her, and she comes to a place of peace with her mother's choices, especially leaving. Sexism is a major part of Enola Holmes' theme. This book in particular basically underlines that it's easy to have someone, especially a woman, decommitted to a lunatic asylum. If Enola had a man in charge of her, she could have been committed for sitting down to speak to a grimy urchin in the streets. But again, her being a woman allows her access and knowledge that her brothers definitely don't have. In the previous book, Enola disguises herself in a way he could never recognize her by smashing that like button, especially if you forgot. Anyway, continuing on with our analysis, with the help of great makeup application, a beautiful and luxurious head of hair, and other drastic changes, she makes herself look beautiful. I mean, it's not to say that Enola isn't already beautiful. She figures out that men are easier to manipulate and more forward and annoying. She learns that women are harder to deal with anyways. They're less likely to open up to a girl that seemingly displays themselves to be a plain Jane. This kind of says a lot about society, where the prettier girls get more respect and attention from men. 
where beauty and frivolity is more prioritized before the fact of recognizing women as human beings and not just some pretty things to visually satisfy men. Again, Enola being the feminist queen she is, realizes this. Enola learns that Doctor is still protecting her hidden identity. When he first met her as Dr. Ragustin's secretary, Watson didn't even pay attention to her name. She was a young woman, not worthy of his attention. When Sherlock first sees Elizabeth at the Watson residence, he doesn't recognize her disguise because he doesn't give a pretty young noblewoman much thought. This is where we find weakness in men. Don't be fooled by looks, guys. People have so much more to them than just their looks. Marks on and around the door show that it was forced open. And recently, there were signs of- Enola is compelled to find Dr. Watson despite the risks to herself since she cares for him. She's still saddened by her mother's response to her request for assistance, but she eventually forgave her after realizing the damage that family resentment can cause. Mycroft has noticed the floral theme in their mother's correspondence, which demonstrates better awareness than the renowned detective, and Enola is astonished to learn that it's him instead of Sherlock asking to meet with her. Both brothers acknowledge that Enola was able to locate Dr. Watson when they were unable to. She's deeply moved by this. Our villain serves as a good illustration of hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. Oh, I mean brotherly love that extends beyond murder, but also marred by an unwillingness to forgive. This book, no doubt, is just as good as the previous two were, where the story expands in not only the sense of aligning with the plot lines that were left open in the previous two stories, but expand on that more, to leaving more mystery and excitement for readers. Enola Holmes is a book series that will definitely entice and excite that curiosity and free spirits of many young women in this day and age. Not only that, but it also shows the issues that a lot of society faced back then and still faces to this day, like gender roles and misogyny, poverty and hardships, family trauma and pain, and a lot more. Not only does this book connect with people in a fun, mystery-driven way, but it also touches hearts and minds, warming up everybody who decides to read. Lord McIntyre. No. But it all fits. No one has sat in this chair. There are no marks on the car. I truly do hope that the movie series decides to pursue this book and make an adaptation of it as well. The plot lines are really interesting and surprisingly kind of dark, which will definitely be interesting to see it being created into film. Check out these videos next.